this is Morgan with Microsoft. I'm here in a little grassy knoll area with some trees where we're gonna go find some mushrooms today and hopefully we find some uh, good mushrooms. So we just had a really good rain. We're gonna have some more rain come in the next few days. So it's very wet soil, green grasses everywhere. And um, this is prime territory to find mushrooms. It's got the smell of fungus and, oh, would you look at that? There we go. Here we have a somewhat fresh grassy white button mushroom. It's been uh, already eaten a little bit by some creatures, little bugs brown spore prints a little wet here's another one a little baby guy beautiful mushroom don't want to eat these though so today we're gonna talk about the basics of mushrooms we're gonna learn a little bit about what environment you want to go explore to find mushrooms and the differences between finding mushrooms on the ground or in trees um, is important on what you want to find. So depending on um, what type of foraging you're planning on doing, if you're trying to gather mushrooms to eat or to study, or if you're trying to study what is called mycorrhizal, the mushrooms and fungus in the ground that interact with plants, depends on what environment you're going to want to be in to find those types of fungi. So you can see that we have grass here. There's definitely a prevalent amount of mycelium and what is called mycorrhizal, the fungus that symbiotically connect with plants. It's definitely some of that in the grass. We have some trees over here. So I'm expecting to find some mycelium, maybe some polypore mushrooms. You know, hopefully we find some good ones. It's been raining for a week. And so when you want to go explore to find mushrooms, it's best to try to understand what the plant life is on the surface because depending on that plant life, whether there's certain trees or shrubs or grass uh, or a dry desert rocky area, depends on what type of fungus you'll find. So now we're going to go dig in these trees. And One of the things you want to look for as a human who likes mushrooms is on trees, we have a type of mushroom which is prevalent. You know, it's got a lot of different mushroom species in its family called a polypore. And now a polypore is a mushroom that doesn't have the gills underneath, it has pores. They're like little spongy mushrooms. And this, the spores come out of the pores instead of gills. And um, these are mostly pepper trees here. So not too many mushrooms you see growing on the pepper trees, but this is where you'll see lion's mane and turkey tails and different wood-eating mushrooms. Um, they're, they're pretty much the best mushrooms to eat, grow out of trees and wood and logs. You don't really want to eat the ones growing out of the ground, the, the decomposers, soporatic mushrooms. Those mushrooms tend to be not good nutrition or could be poisonous, you know, like a portobello is is a secondary decomposer. Everyone in the United States eats them for some reason, but they're not really good for you. And um, there's other mushrooms that people like to eat that grow out of the ground, and they may get you sick or do something to your brain. So, you know, little snails. But uh, the polypores, those are the mushrooms we want to find especially if we want to eat them. Here, we would want to find mushrooms and fungus in the depths of the tree. Now, from what I can tell, there is a good amount of mycelium right here growing on this tree. So, this is fungus growing inside the root system of this giant tree. And if you could tell, this is a spongy material. This is mycelium. Now, 
How long has it been there for? We don't know. Is it a little bit of uh, bark and root? Yes. But the dead tree, it's not a dead tree, but the dead parts of the tree still growing because the mycelium is rerouting nutrients to the parts of the wood. The, the beauty is that, you know, a branch rips off, falls down, still grows, and even reroots itself back into the ground with its branches and connects itself back to the, what we would call the, the world wood web, the wide wood web, the, the internet of the forest, because it's the mycelium that acts as the wires for the forest. It's this fungal mesh that basically is the materials that connects all of the trees together. Nice colored gills. And then you go like this, get them spores out of there. These guys, wow, those are pretty. Let's check one of these out. Wow. Here is another. Secondary decomposer. This guy is. Ooh, it's got some beautiful gills. Check that out. Wow. Not exactly sure what that is, but that is a heavy looking mushroom. Very cool. called a lichen or a lichen and this is a very special lichen a lichen is like venom in spider-man it's a symbiote it's where the first time the word symbiote was used so there's a little orange rusty and yellow and these are algae and fungi sometimes bacteria cytobacteria which cytobacteria is green it's got chlorophyll in it and the algae's green, it's got chlorophyll in it. It'll take sunlight and make sugar. But the mushroom can't make sugar, but the mushroom eats rock. So what's going on is the mushroom eats the rock, gets the calcium and the nitrogen out of the rock, feeds the algae and the bacteria the, the nutrients from the rock, and the algae and the bacteria feed the mushroom sugar from the sunlight. So they're like sharing food with each other, and the lichens cover like 50% of every rock on earth and a lot of the trees. This lichen right here is most likely Pleopsidium chlorophyllum and it could be a little different but there is a yellow lichen like this that grows on Martian soil. So that's why it lives on rocks, doesn't even need the dirt and trees. I want to remember that when you're looking for mushrooms you want to have the tools you need to find these mushrooms and maybe bring these mushrooms home with you. So it's good to always have a knife, you know. You want to have a knife that you can cut a mushroom out of the dirt. You also maybe want to have something to put these mushrooms in, you know. And the foragers usually use a little basket that has air blowing through it so you don't get uh, the mushrooms becoming too moist and, and getting damaged. So a little wicker basket is always the classic way to find mushrooms. And another thing is you want to maybe be a little smart, get some little surgical-like tools, little scalpels and tweezers and uh, alcohol pads and things that will allow you to gather the mushroom tissues in a somewhat sanitary way where you don't contaminate them. Because um, fungi, just like humans and animals, have a very 
serious relationship with bacteria and there's bacteria and viruses everywhere in nature and so you know you don't you want to bring your mushrooms home you don't want to bring home bacteria and viruses and and there's going to always be insects and different things that interact with those mushrooms so um, the tools of the trade are important you know and uh, if you're going to go hiking in a faraway place you want to make sure you have the the necessary tools to go explore you know for your own safety water and medical equipment you know and band-aids and things like that we also want to have the tools to gather fungus and bring it home safely without damaging your your specimens mushroom life on the logs oh brown caps i think they're inky cap or they could be something else here we go Inky cap. These are the ones that are growing over there in the other grassy area. They're so pretty though. Here we have found some polypores. Can't tell exactly what they are. We'll find out later. But the ants are over here chomping on them. So these polypores, they grow out of rotting wood and so we have a rotting log here with polypores growing all over the side of it so here is a polypore and why is it a polypore it's got little pores on the bottom side of it now a polypore is a mushroom that puts the spores out on the pores. And now these mushrooms, it's a little green, so it's a little rotting. These mushrooms are more likely to be the kind of mushrooms you want to eat. This is a very beautiful polypore. Would potentially eat it. Don't know what it is. Similar to a turkey tail. Similar to a lion's mane, but a little different. Grass, we have rotting wood. We have a mushroom here that is growing, as it seems, on some wood. But it's not growing on wood, it's growing on the leaves in the soil, decomposing on the wood. But if you get down to the bottom, it's, it's rooted in the tree. And you can see that. But it's really not rooted in the wood, even though it kind of looks like it. It's rooted in the soil that is being built on top of the wood eating both leaf new dirt but it's also taking nutrients out of the wood but it's got gills so it's not a polypore we want to look for the conditions on where mushrooms would like to grow and what we have here is perfect conditions for a rotting log to have some polypores on it because it's underneath a tree it's shaded it's wet it's out of the sun but it's got enough water and rain in this damp soaking area and then over here we have all these beautiful logs and what we have down here is a good prime location for mushrooms to grow shaded grass dying tree pieces perfect spot. These almost look like turkey tails. They're not, but they're cousins. They're they're polypore. Here we got a polypore growing on a tree. Pretty old though. And we're gonna take a piece of one of these.
right, good boy. Look what we found today. Found some good, beautiful, colorful specimens. Mycelium. Oh man, look how big this guy is. Beautiful. Thank you.